music. Hey, 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 my little raspberry paws. My name is Tatsu and this is the great welcome. So together with you, we will discuss the most beautiful, the ugliest, the best and the worst in the beautiful world of makeup. And we'll talk about hairstyling products, but just a little bit. A little, little, little bit. Just a, just a tiny, just a tiny little bit. Because when your makeup looks bomb, you can have a bird's nest on your head. Just a tiny one. So, let me tell you this. I am so happy that you tuned in. Because that means that you love makeup the same way I do. And I really love makeup. I love makeup really bad. I mean, makeup can't sue you out of your own flat. And makeup can't take your dog away. Makeup is there for you. And makeup doesn't judge. For a better world. And a better tomorrow. I'm from Germany and my English is a little bit messed up, but that's cute though. Like my English teacher said, at least nobody can understand you. So short real talk break time. Real talk break. Real, real talk break. Real, 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 real talk. Real talk break. There's nothing on it. So before we start. I have to tell you that all the things I say here are my own personal opinion. And you know, everybody of you is different and everybody prefers different things. So if you like a product and it fills your cup, not sponsored, then keep on liking it, even if I don't. It's with all things in life, just because people tell you otherwise. You don't have to follow their direction. Except there's asbestos in it, then you should throw the stuff out of the window. I, I can just do this with one hand. So am I very opinionated? Yeah. Do I get in trouble sometimes because of my openness? Absolutely. Do I think pineapple does go on pizza? <laughs> Hell no. Are we sliding into a disclaimer you may ask? <laughs> we are already through it. So boys, girls and trans people, do you know it when a YouTuber's talking and talking without even saying anything? But there's one more thing. Fake it till you make it. So this is my first YouTube video ever and I tried my best with the lighting, with the camera angle, but everything is slightly off. So use your imagination. If you have any tips or tricks for me, then please let me know in the comment section down below and help me learning. Hashtag Tatsu Tips. And don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. So this product was released quite some time ago and now that the desert dust has already settled a little bit, I think it's worth it to look back in the rearview mirror and let the engine howl again or slam on the brakes if necessary. If necessary. Buckle up! And let's have a look to the Lumbo under the full coverage foundations, the Huda Beauty 4 Filter Foundation. The Huda Beauty 4 Filter Foundation is currently available for €39.95 at your nearest Sephora or on the HB website. So, and here she comes. So, and here she is. She's big, y'all. So, this is the shade Crane Brille 150G, and she comes in 30 different shades. So, what do I think about the shade range? Is it okay? I think so. Could there have been more shades? Absolutely. So, as what is the product described? I think I deleted my accent. Quote? Velvety full coverage foundation, so good you might delete your photo editing apps. Is there really a universe out there where you will delete Facetune? Hell no. Next, 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 next. Furthermore, the foundation is sulfate and paraben free. I hope I said it right. Sulfate and paraben free. And it contains argan oil, the pinnacle of the oils. Argan oil still out here trending. The full full foundation dries semi matte. This is a big promise because I know a lot of products with this exact promise. And you are still out here looking like the little mermaids of the oil fields. The argan oil fields. The argan oil fields. The argan oil fields. Good like for the little argan oil field mermaid. And comment for semi matte dry. So, how do we apply her? So, how do we apply her? Nah, just kidding. Quote, a pump or less, apply with a dense brush or beauty sponge. Does somebody really use a brush for this? So I could imagine doing it when I don't have so much time on my hands, like in the theater or at the opera, because they are always laid there. But 
but I will still go over with a beauty blender or another beauty sponge so that I really have an airbrushed finish and to erase fine lines from the face. So I want to try out my new beauty sponge from Tarte Cosmetics. Okay, not that new. So here she is, she's normally purple but 2019 you really assumed the color of the beauty sponge, shame on you. So this is the quickie beauty blending sponge. So this is the quickie beauty blending sponge from Tarte Cosmetics. But I think we'll use some real technique sponges too, just for makeup because you know, this is a sticky foundation because you know the foundation gets sticky very very quick and I think this can reduce the um, all-in-all look of the foundation quite a bit just a, bit. a little bit and with a little bit I mean a lot so how much does she contain she comes exactly with 35 milliliters or 1.18 fluid ounces thank you later I think this is a little bit more than in other usual foundations but for that price range it could always be a little more so what do I think about the packaging? Don't judge a book by its cover. Cover is beautiful, you know. It's like 2019. Real talk. I think the packaging is excellent. I really, really love it. Because it's this classical Huda design. And I love this little ombre moment going on here. Very beautiful, very luxurious. I love the clear design really much. I appreciate that. Very timeless very clear. I really like that it comes as a pump spray because it's just more hygienic. And hygiene is so important and I love that companies think that too. Because I had nothing more than going into an open product with a brush over my finger. It doesn't matter as much with powder products but when water comes into play it can get real nasty really quick. So in one more thing let me tell you hygiene is key. A botched makeup job is one thing and May I get you fired from this job. But a crying eye infected model is a whole different level and I promise you this will ruin your career in the industry when she falls out one or two weeks because of this. Hygiene is key, just saying. So now we come to the scent and I'll open this again. So the fall filter foundation from Huda Beauty is really heavily scented. It smells a little bit like a Valentine's flower bouquet straight from the lab. But do I like the smell? I do, but I'm not a fan of scented makeup at all. So is the scent necessary? No, and let me tell you why. Because it's one more useless ingredient that can quite reduce the range of people that you can sell this to because of their allergies. I mean, I get it. It's a cute and very, very nice, girly, expensive moment. I get it, absolutely. But is it a smart business move? Only if you have an ingredient which has a really strong scent on its own. And you maybe want to cover it. But what do I know for real? No spraying conspiracies. It was just a fact. So back to it. I don't really like scented makeup. Because let's keep it short, it breaks me out. I don't really know what it is. But when I use this foundation more than two times a week, it really breaks me out. I can see my skin going down. I think it's the scent. I'm 90% sure. So and there is another thing. I have a few Huda Beauty products and the setting powder or the baking powder is also scented very very heavily and you know the combination makes me a bit dizzy when I use it. The powder is very fine and it will get everywhere and the scent is everywhere. But, 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 bear with me, the powder is great. The powder is amazing, I really love it because I struggled to find the perfect powder. I use a combination of a few powders and this powder is really great and I really love it. And I have to tell you, I have to do a video about that too. If you want me to do an extra episode on this powder, please let me know down in the comments and we'll have another part of the flashback review. So we are half through this intro, really amazing. But there's a very big thing and I really want to speak with you about that. It's quite hard because you know I know that a lot of LGBTQ people are struggling with the Huda Beauty brand and, and there are quite some things that I want to talk about. The first thing is the Huda Beauty cosmetics brand is only targeting females or on their website or so I think because I've never seen a trans trans woman, trans male whatsoever or just a normal male on their website. And I mean it's 2019. I know that the life in the United Arabian Emirates is very different. I know that their um, brand is based there. I know all of this fact. But is it okay to ignore that when the beauty community is all in all so inclusive? I just wonder why not more people are talking about this. 
I would wish me an open discussion without allegations, without hate, just, just an open, friendly discussion. So, you know, this is very, very important for me. And please let me know what you think about this, not issue, about this, I don't want to call it issue, about this topic in the comment section down below if you're about to join the conversation. The makeup is really, really great, really great. But sometimes I ask myself, which system do I support with my money when I buy her makeup, you know? Because, because even Huda has to pay taxes. And you know, these taxes are used for the justice system in the United Arabian Emirates. And you know, maybe in the end you are supporting a system of suppression and I don't, I don't know, please tell me what you think about it. You know, I'm just learning, I'm just on my journey to try and figure everything out, so please let me know. And I don't want to offend anyone, I just, really, I just want to speak about this topic like an adult human being, because I think it's very important and when there are questions, there need to be answers. I'll look into this topic uh, after this video and if I figure something out, I'll tell you more. But because it was my overall impression, you know, a little bit of a bitter taste and you know, and I heard some people talk about this topic before. And so, really, I can't say this often enough, I can't stress this often enough. Please tell me what you think. Is this a problem? Is this not a problem? Um, so, but let's get the party started. <laughs> first tutorial video. So like you can see my face is already clean and my hair is already done. It's really done. For real. So first we're gonna start with applying the primer. For our today's video I choose the Timeless Moving Primer from Tarte Cosmetics. Like you can see it's beautiful, really beautiful and very very high reflective. And you know it's like when you touch it can directly see the imprints. Ah, beautiful. So it's very, very firm because you know when you have a fluid primer sometimes when it's an open bottle it's all over the place. And so I just go in with a dense brush and start to apply it all over my face. Um, I like to go with a little bit less primer because I'm that kind of person that doesn't overdo the primer because I like to have um, just a little bit primer in all the areas where I don't really need it and a little bit more of primer on the areas that I need it, like um, in the center of my forehead, in the T-zone, you know, around the nose in these areas, and a little bit on the chin. And you, what is that? <gasps> Sniper! <laughs> a bit of facial hair. Uh, I always try to fix it and lay it a little bit down on my skin. You know when you have that uh, Lanugo style hair and it's always a little bit better when you go from up to down in this movement because then you don't have the problem with the hair standing up. And what I always love to do is um, when I go behind because it's always a little bit brighter and I uh, <laughs> tried a lot of different um, a lot of different products but I don't know I have behind this ear I'm just a little bit confused because everything is moved <laughs> because I have a screen in front of me and behind this ear I have always a little dry patch I don't absolutely don't know what it is so when I first applied a little layer of primer um, I will go in with my finger and then just add up a little bit more in the areas where I really, really need it. Or like down under here. <laughs> and what I do is I just tap a little bit. I try to press in the product into the pores so that you can have a really airbrushed finish when you apply your foundation later. So the next thing we are gonna do is apply the concealer. So and for this round we go with the Tarte Creaseless Concealer in the shade 20 and Light. So and today we are gonna use the 
quick blending sponge from Tarte Cosmetics because I was like, you know, I borrowed real technique sponges and I don't know what happened. I hope you can see it. It's just like very disformed and you know things start to fall off and I don't know what happened because I always keep them in this kind of jar, you know, they are always in there and I don't know what happens because there are no sharp edges, nothing and <laughs> just parts started to fall off and I don't like it because um, I'm always a big fan of the beauty blender but you know you have to try different things to find better ones but I think the beauty blender is actually the best shot you can go. So now we are going to apply a concealer. I have always a little small brush because you know when I apply um, concealer with the applicator under my eye area I don't have the feeling that I can go really into the crease and when I use a beauty sponge to really press it into the skin I always have the feeling like it's not um, on the right places and the kind that it should be and will go in with a wet quickie blending sponge and um, I always start to just blend it a little imagining happens later um, and I you know I don't tap so uh, heavily I have a very very light hand and what I like to do when I am halfway through I just start to tap in a little bit directly under the waterline so and then I keep on blending and I'm that type of person I am so have <laughs> I love blending okay I really really do and I could keep blending oh, until my face comes off <laughs> So the next thing I do is I cover this area. So when you apply makeup, you want the most coverage here, and then just have it a little bit lighter to the end of your face. And what I really like to do is I always go in in this corner and <laughs> sounds so silly but it really works because when your skin is very structured here you really want to press that bad boy in there so and now we'll go on the other side of the face and I start again directly under the inner corner of the eye and I will apply a little, little, little less makeup the further I go to the edge of my face so and what you can do um, with the rest of the product that you have on your sponge you can start and go in on areas that are a little bit more oily because maybe you've noticed that already when you have areas in your face that are a little bit oily product doesn't stick to those as well as they do to drier patches of your skin so what I really like is I go on my nose because product doesn't sit there so well um, and I apply a little bit of the already little bit dry makeup there and I really like that because I think that helps when you go over with the product a little bit later so uh, the next thing I do I don't go directly into this fold because what I have afterwards is product will crease after a certain amount of time so I always try to go and apply the makeup a little bit out of there and then the next thing is I will apply again the less and less makeup the further I go out of my face And don't forget the ear. You can see it sometimes on in news channels that you have beautiful people there that are narrated in the news. But when you look at their ears, you will see that they are sometimes really, really red. And that this is because 
something for me to do there yes um, I think this is very funny because you know I'm from Germany and here you see that so often and I'm always like oh my god they forgot their ears and So, uh, and if you feel that your sponge is a little bit sticky from the drying concealer, just wet it again. There is absolutely no problem. I just have a little bit of water in there because I don't like it too wet. Um, I think that wouldn't guarantee such a good finished foundation. So just a little bit wet, you know. Humid. <laughs> Always when I'm a little bit stressed, you see that I rose always a little bit up. When I'm really relaxed, they are at the same height, but I really don't know what's up there. It's like the eyebrow thing from Ethan Klein from H383 and I just think that's so hilarious because when I'm stressed, I always have like this little, little small ticks, you know, that are a little bit creepy, but I don't know. Just find you a person that loves that, you know, we are we aren't perfect and that's really okay. So now that the concealer is already dried a little little bit on the nose, you can apply another layer. And then just start to blend it in, like we did with the other parts. I really like the sponge. For the price it's really okay. Is it a game changer? No. But I really like the sponge. It's cute. I like the color. It's purple. I mean who hates purple? What I really like to do is I go in with a dense brush under the nostrils uh, just to spread the concealer a little bit more evenly because you know when the skin is very textured there uh, like mine is I really like to do this because uh, you just have a little bit more control and it will give you an even better finish. With the rest of the product that's on this brush, I will go in again here on the nostrils. And just add a little bit more coverage to the crease. Because you know, I'm always there, it's so horrible, because always there, you will see everything. And it's really hard to cover this for me with Dermacolor, it's okay, but you'll sometimes see this and I really don't like that. It will ruin your look and it will ruin your day. Fat mouth problems! So uh, then I go in with the concealer a little bit above and beneath the crease because if you start in the crease um, you will have there the most product even if you blend it and that's not good because then it could crease in the crease, you know, crease and crease. So and then I always like to blend it really good from the inner corner to the outer corner so that the most of the coverage will be on the eyelid and then I just start to blend it gently. Same exact thing we're gonna do on the other eye. So um, I really really like the creaseless concealer from Tarte. I think, you know, do you know the problem when you really love a thing like I love shape tape and then there is this other product because you know it was like so many people said ah ah it's not as good as shape tape but I think it's a head on head race you know what I mean and some days um, I will prefer one above the other because you know one dries a little bit more dry and the other is a little bit more red and I really really appreciate it sometimes because um, you know winter is coming. So now we come to the forehead and the forehead is a really, <laughs> really white problem. Now the forehead is always um, 
very problematic for me because you know I have uh, everywhere this little outbreaks but it is because of my medication because I'm a chronic pain patient and therefore I have to take some different medicines and you know um, it's just bad when you try to um, have a good look on your health and on your health care but there are sometimes things in your life that you can't change and that's one of those things but you know um, in the winter it always gets a little bit worse for me and you have to try to do your best I like to do the center of the forehead all the way first because I want there really much coverage and then I just let it fade out a little bit to <laughs> yeah to the hairline I have absolutely no idea why I did that and so what's really important is that you blend it in into the hairline because the problem is your scalp is very very light if you have a yellow shade or olive tone something like this and you don't blend it out directly into the hairline you will see it instantly. so and then i will go all over the forehead to blend all the areas in together you know that thing that really works well for me so and then i let everything dry a little bit and um I'm gonna do my fro. This year will be a little bit tricky because of turtleneck. You need to have a very, very smooth transition between the shapes. I mean, in real life, it's really, really important. I didn't know if we'll see it here as much on the screen. But you know, because everything is really, really noisy when it's not covered with makeup, you see it directly here it's very still over here and very noisy over here so i think we'll see it more on screen than in real life but you know just hope for the best so and don't forget the areas behind the ears i swear to god the people will notice it Don't forget to blend the whole concealer into the neck. Maybe you ask yourself, why in the hell is he doing his whole face with concealer? Because I have a very, very noisy skin uh, with a lot of discoloration, with a lot, a lot of redness. Um, and so I really like to go with a high coverage. And I mean, we'll use the fall filter foundation today. So if we go for high coverage, we'll do the whole damn thing. Duh! So you know sometimes you're sitting down, you're doing your makeup and you ask yourself, what am I doing here? Yo damn, get that ears really good cover. So I have a good tip for you. If you want a very smooth transition between areas of your skin that have to be fully covered and other areas where you may come in contact with like dark or white clothing accessory or whatsoever, bag whatsoever, then you can go with a bigger brush, just very smoothly blend a little bit over. I really like to do that. I don't know why. I'm special. So now we'll go in with shade tape. It's the shade 20 and a light scent. And what I really like to do is I like to start to highlight my face and I love shade tape. So we'll start to highlight my face. What I really like is the high coverage of shade tape because you can really go for it and you can really model your face new and I really really love that. So first I go in and set a really nice highlight on my cheekbone. What I really like is a little curve over here because you have a very organic movement up there and I just love that. I love to do that. Oh that's a little bit dry, no. What's up here? These sponges, these are two weeks old. What's up with this detail? I have absolutely no <laughs> idea what happened to this. Oh, I should have stayed with the beauty blender.
Oh, come on, let's try the real technique sponge. No, no. Next, try again. Oh, I really... I love highlighting so much. Because you, because you can do so much stuff with it. Because it's all about light and shadow and I love to play with light and shadow. Because that can change so much. It can change your whole appearance and I really, really appreciate that. No, appearance, appreciate, appreciate is appearance. And what you see, now you have a middle coverage highlight and I really like this because you know, um, when you go out, you don't want the highlight to be so exaggerated and so in your face. You just want the people to notice that you may slept well, that you are back from, that you are back from vacation, you know? Oh yeah, it was beautiful, Natasha. Oh yeah, we swam so much. Oh, and the drinks, the mojitos, I holy guacamole. So the next thing I do, um, you will see this so often on Instagram, uh, it's a little triangle of highlight on the cheek area and I really like that because you know you have the light coming from here and you have a spot there, you know it's full, full with you, I think that looks very very beautiful. Uh, what I really like to do, I don't want to go into this curve and I don't want to show it up, you know, I want to break the line a little bit and I try to go a little bit straight and a little bit in an upward movement so that you don't have this really really heavy curve oh my god guys do you know what I noticed this is my first tutorial video and I love it so much to sit here and just chat with you guys because it's so relaxing and I'm so happy that you tuned in because if you don't you wouldn't technically know that I exist and you wouldn't watch my video so if you watch this I'm very happy that you tuned in because you know I wanted to start a YouTube channel quite some time ago you know like um, a few years ago I was like oh my god I need to do a YouTube channel but I hadn't had the skills and um, I was like about what do you want to do a YouTube channel because I think it's very hard to find a good topic and to stay with the topic that you love because you know sometimes you change in your life you know you start with a, like a travel blog or like something else and then you are like oh no I just I want to do book reviews and I think it could be very hard to gain a subscriber base and have a high engagement when when you then later change to a different topic because you know you are here because you love makeup you like makeup you're interested in it and that's really great and I can promise you something I'll never start to do another thing in makeup because I'm so much into makeup because you know it was the only topic where I was like yeah I need to share this and I need to do a YouTube channel and this makes me so damn happy we have to get that coin first with the lighting the camera the screen, everything else, the makeup. I was like, what can I show you? You should just get to know me better, you know, my techniques, what I do, what I like, what I don't like as much, what I think about the industry, about other people. Because we don't have, like in America or in Britain, people that always release beauty products. You know, we have Heidi Klum, she's very, very beautiful, a gorgeous woman, I really, really like her. But that's quite all. We have Dieter Bolan, if you know him. Like modern talking, we make the TV even copyright strike. And the thing is, you know, the thing is, you know, sometimes you can get really lost in Germany. So I think that is because we have a lot of cultural things that uh, you can engage with, that you can do. But the YouTube scene isn't, isn't, isn't even big, you know. I love science, astronomy. I'm such a big fan. I really, really love and appreciate Isaac Arthur. He's so great. I love him so much. His videos are so mind-blowingly awesome. You need to check him out. Or uh, like John Michael Gaudier and uh, Event Horizon. He's so great. You will find him so. So the next thing I really like to do is I like to highlight 
My jawbone a little bit just going because I had a very unpleasant shadow. I really go over here and just construct a little bit of a sharper jawbone. You will see it soon. You will see it. Just a little bit duct tape. Everything is perfect. You can see here it is already a little bit sharper. It just looks more natural. Can you feel me? I just love this really much because it's a little bit sharper, a little bit more forward. Oh my god, I'm talking so much about the damn Java. <laughs> Though the next thing I really like to talk about with you is um, maybe I should tell you which people in the makeup industry I really admire because there are some and I like Tati, Tati Westbrook. She is so beautiful, she's so amazing and she is so inspiring to me because her channel is so clean, so classical and I really, 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 I love her so much. She's so inspiring and I'm a big, big fan of her. Next person I really, really love is Rob Beauty Christie because she's so natural. And she's so relatable and I think that's so important because, you know, if you just see people that are so perfect and unbelievably young, beautiful, thin, whatever, uh, it's hard to engage with them. And Rob Beauty Christie, she's so funny, I love her so much and because, you know, you trust persons more, I guess, when they are relatable, you know, when they are like you. And I think Rob Beauty Christie is really beautiful she's so kind and so funny i really love her i love the you're not my real father thing and i don't know she's just so inspiring and i would love to meet her one day and because you know i would love to meet these people all one day and just tell them what i did for my life because you know i'm always i was always a dream chaser i am like if i like something i will chase it i will do it I'll just keep on going no matter what, no matter how miserable I feel through it. Because you know, some sometimes you forget that even when you go through really, really dark times, there will be sunshine at the end of the tunnel. And in the darkest night, the smallest star shines the brightest. And it's like this with life, you know. Not everything can be perfect. And when you have all the money in the world, are you happy then? Because you know some people say like, no, 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 money is not everything. That, this is absolutely true. Money is not everything. Money can't buy you health in a way um, when you have a terminal illness. You can have all the money in the world. When research isn't there yet, you will have a problem. You just free yourself. So I think if I would win the lottery or something like that, I would be scared. Because every day I would be like, oh no, no, I have everything financial. And what if I lose that, you know? What if I wake up someday and everything will be gone? That must be a horrible feeling. And I think even richest people in the world, I mean, you can't lose money when you are behind some kind of border where you have like two billion dollars because you will have so much money in investments and everything and i think it's quite hard to lose that so next thing what i really really like to do is to set a highlight on my lip on my cupid's bow and a little bit under the mouth corners because i just want to have a sharp clear mouth line and a really really um, straight in your face highlight can be very good Next, um, I like to highlight the area under my brow and I love to go the whole way, but you have to be careful. Um, if your lids are a little bit hooded and your eyebrow is a little bit down here, it isn't as good when you do a whole brow highlight because this can press your eyebrow down a little bit and then it may not be as beautiful. But I really like to do that because I have the feeling it brings my brow up a lot. Big brain inside there. So, what I wanted to talk about, people in the industry, the next person I really like is Jeffree Star because he's so inspirational and I really think he's so unique. And you know, this world can be very hard when you have to ask yourself every day, why I'm not like the other people, why I'm not like them or he or she or whatsoever, you know? And this is so hard to be yourself and to accept yourself in a way that you are you. 
And this can be quite hard. I struggle with this because the problem is, you know, when I noticed that I was gay, um, it was very hard because I'm from a very rural area, you know, here are no gay people. And so this was always quite hard because I was afraid of, yeah, what will my friends say? Just kidding, I had no friends. When you have to go to school and everything, this was a really, really dark time for me because I was in a very bad headspace. And this brings me to the next thing. Why is everybody sad today? So many people are so sad, you know? Sometimes I think I was sad very often, very often. In a corner highlight, the next step, very important. For a sharp and beautiful looking eye. I was sad very often when I was a little bit younger, maybe puberty or whatsoever, but I have the feeling that a lot of people today are very sad, very depressed and I understand that because you know when you work 100 hours in the office and you don't have real things to live, you know, we don't go out anymore, we are just at our phones the whole damn time. That's a really good point. Instagram. I have so many friends and they are all like, oh yeah, the people on Instagram, they have such a perfect life and everything's so perfect. Instagram, every picture there is perfect. And no human being, maybe the Kardashians, but no human being could eat at a three star plus Michelin restaurant every day. And you can't travel around the world every day. Maybe it's your job, you won't have fun so much when it's your job traveling around the world because you're just sitting in a plane the whole time when you fly from Berlin to Auckland it's such a long trip but no person would ever put such a pic on the gram like oh yeah 18 plus hours oh my god that's the thing you just see the best part of the person on Instagram the most facetune version I use facetune and I really like it because when you have discoloration something like this pimples whatsoever it's a really good thing but People have to learn. You can't compare yourself with a picture. Everything is so face tuned. Just don't compare yourself with a picture. So the next thing I'm gonna do is a forehead highlight. And I just love to go just a little bit. And I love when the shape is a little bit smaller. I try, you know, to go out like this to break these lines and just to make everything look a little bit smaller. I just like to have a little bit of highlight there and like you see I need a little bit more coverage in this area here. So I will go with this and after I did my forehead highlight I'll just spot correct all the discolorations like here, like over here. Because you know discolorations they can ruin a whole good look. So, and then we'll go to the nose highlight. If you have a longer nose, then maybe don't use a straight line to highlight your nose because I just do that because I will break the lines a little bit on later with the contouring. But if you have a longer nose and you don't contour and you just use a little bit of highlight or whatsoever, then look that you use a concealer and don't make a straight line. That isn't so good because this can exaggerate the shape of your nose even more and I really hate my nose you have to look at my nose did you did something on your nose if you can change your physical appearance to a state that you like more why shouldn't you do that I mean it's just logical to do it if I don't like something I'll change it so where was I oh yeah social media just put your phone away you don't have to look on your phone every second because what I notice when I'm out there, maybe you noticed it already and you put your phone away or your battery dies whatsoever and you look around all the people, all, everybody's on their phones. But what happened to the conversation? I think you can forget to speak to other people just out there in the society. Everybody on social media is like, yeah, very outspoken, you know, most of the people. And the problem is if you are outspoken there, but not in real life, it's not that good because the main factors are still in real life. I think we should put our phones away sometimes. Just be with our family, appreciate the people that we love. Just my opinion. So what I'm gonna do, I'll go back in with the Tarte Creaseless Concealer and conceal these bad boys. This year was so 
so amazing. Did you notice how many launches there were? I mean, this was really, really much. Do I have a problem with this? No, absolutely not. I love when makeup comes and goes and comes and goes. But I think, you know, some products, they should have a moment. Just a little bit to sink in, to have the reviews rolling in. Because I have always a problem. I like a product. Or I think I will gonna like a product. I watch out for reviews and I'm like oh uh, what did she say what did he say and so on and so forth and then I'll go into the store and just touch the product test it and I'll be like mm, okay and sometimes I let it sink in a little time and I'll go back home and think about it the last thing was the new Marc or new the Marc Jacob bronze so you know the big one uh, and I really liked it and I was in the store and all the reviews were quite good and I tested it I just put it on my arm and I was like, hmm, have to think about it again. If there is a lounge after lounge after lounge, people don't know what to buy or so I guess prove me wrong. You know, some products when they are really good, they need a little bit of time to sink in. And the next thing is that every beauty YouTuber has their own brand. I mean, that's, that's absolutely okay. Get your coin, absolutely. But can you see through this with the whole consumerism? I have sometimes the feeling that I have to buy this palette, this palette, this palette, this foundation, this concealer. And I tell you something, I will do it because I love makeup so much. But there are so many palettes out there and so many releases. I think that so many beauty YouTubers, they have palettes over palettes, foundations over foundations, eyeshadow palettes, uh, so many stuff. You can't review all this stuff in your lifetime. Because if per month three or four just eyeshadow palettes come out, how should you review all of these with all the other stuffs, the lipsticks, um, the continuing stories to some product? That's so hard that you can't keep up with this. And so I think sometimes maybe some really good products just slip through. So now you see everything is highlighted. I tried to conceal the spots. I don't know, I can't do it as good on myself because maybe I'm too careful and I just take way too much of the coverage. But on other people, I can do it so well. I don't know. I know it sounds like mm, a little bit fishy, Tatsu. But I think for a good underlying foundation base, you have reduced the noise on the skin. And I think it's Quite good to go now. Now we come to the foundation. The camera transfers everything so different. And it's just really amazing because you know, sometimes like there was a Toddy video with Scott Barnes and he said, if I'll do your makeup, it will look good on TV, good on camera, but in real life you'll like the ah. And that's the thing. I always try to look very natural, just very a very good normal beauty style that you can out, go out very professional, very good. And I think it's very important for most of the people. I invest a lot of time in a good makeup look because it makes me feel so so good, so great and love to start my day out with this. So, but now, here she is again. I will put it on the back of my hand because, you know, your hand is warm. So my hands are normally very very cold. The warmth will change the consistency of the and I really like that. Oh, you have oils on your skin and I think if you do your makeup sometimes, some places with your fingers, it can be very, very different and very, very beneficial. So you don't always need brushes or sponges. You can do it with your fingers. You know, my chef always was like, I use my fingers, they are, they are the best tools and we evolved to use our hands. And so, I think he's right. I'll just use a little bit and go in with the sponge and then I'll start first under the eyes and blend it out a little bit because you know I want the highest coverage under there and so we start and you see that oh my god that's so beautiful. I think it's a little bit too yellow on the screen. You will see it, but the coverage is really, really amazing. It looks really, really great. And here in real life, let's take a sec. Yes. Now you see a little bit that you have foundation on. But I mean, that's okay. It's a full coverage foundation. I'm not surprised. So I'll go in here and I have to work 
a little bit quicker because I can feel it's already drying and getting stickier and stickier by the second. And you have to work very fast change to a real technique sponge because the first one is really really sticky and you know it will take foundation off if it's sticky and interact with the rest of the foundation. Go in one more time and start out here. I see it on screen. It's a very, very good coverage. It looks very, very natural. I really, really appreciate it. So, and it's drying quite fast. I already feel it. You know, it feels, everything feels a little bit tighter and you can feel the foundation on it. So it's not like with the um, like the Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation where you have the really like whipped cream feeling. Um, here you can absolutely feel that you have foundation on, and it really feels more like um, some kind of cream, so that you can really feel it. <laughs> change the sponges because they get so sticky really love the foundation i really really do because it's very very full coverage and i think that's not so often to find when i want to cover spots when i go out i already use a dermal color i could imagine when you go to an event in the evening it would be very beautiful and i have to tell you this is the shade 150g cream brulee and this was the shade that fitted the best, so I tried all the shades in my shade range and every shade that was available there, I tried and um, this was the one that was closest to me, but you see it's really, no, not really, but you can see it's a little bit yellow on the screen. And here in Natura, it's quite good, I really like that, I appreciate that. So, how is the blendability? I think it blends quite well, but on some areas I have a little bit of an issue. Maybe you see it all over here. It's just, in reality, it doesn't look as patchy. Here it looks quite patchy. Next step, the throat. Like you can see on your video, we have a very, 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 very high dismatch from ear to ear. So you can see the difference between the color of my throat where concealer is on and the shade of my face. Maybe the concealer is a little bit too rosy for the yellow tone of the foundation. But like in reality, it looks quite natural but on screen it looks a little bit too yellow. Just for your info, we already used two pumps of the foundation. So and this is the finished foundation, so 
I really like this foundation. We come to the advantages, and it is advantages. So what I really like on this foundation, it's very full coverage. The next thing, it dries semi-matte, but... Mm, no, it's okay, it dries semi -matte. The next thing I really like is the blendability. Now we come to the disadvantages. First thing, there isn't really a disadvantage, but uh, I think it's unnecessary to sand your foundation. The next thing is, I'm not a fan of sticky things. But what do I think about this foundation? All in all, the foundation is really good. Will I give it a shot? Absolutely. So could I imagine to buy this again? Absolutely. Is it more for like your daily makeup? No, not really. It's more for like the evening gala, the nice dinner. It's more for that. But what I really love, a clear canvas to draw on. You have a clear base to work on. And I think this is so important and so great because then you can try so much stuff. You can really let the creativity kick in. On a clear ground, you can use a real pop in eyeshadow. You can use a bad wing line or whatever you want. A beautiful lipstick color that you maybe wouldn't use when your foundation isn't that good. So I really like this one. <laughs> minutes since I did my foundation five minutes have passed and I just want to say something about the creasiness of the whole it creases a little maybe you can see it already in the eye crease here over there on the forehead just a little bit but I think normally this isn't a big problem because you were over with the beauty planner just a number of time and then you set up with the pump no big issue for setting our today's beautiful look we're gonna use the easy bake loose setting and fixing powder from not again the Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder. What a name. I'm in the shade Sugar Cookie. So I really love the setting powder. I always use a combination of different setting powders. So all over and down. What I really like to do when I set my face, I go over all the areas where it might have been creasing a little. And then I start with a Zoeva brush to set these areas. She's been used, boys. So I'll just go in a little tap of the excess and then I'll go to set this area. She's quite expensive. You know, we are on a budget here. Then I'll go over with a less expensive setting powder. But it's really, really, really important that you set the under eye areas. And just go to the waterline, yeah? Really, you have to really go there. You know, so many people are afraid of using things near their eyes. I'm not that kind of person. So I'll set my face off camera. Now we have set our face and I think it's very beautiful. It's a beautiful powder. Because you know it, when you overdo it with powder, your face can become really, really, really dry. And I'm thinking about making a big powder edition, the powder one plus one because I think powder is so important, you know, you can mess up your makeup with HD powder, you can have massive flashbacks and there's so much to know. So I set my face with the Huda Beauty Easy Bake, blah blah, bacon, blah blah, sugar cook. So I set my face with the Huda Beauty Loose Bake Baking, Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder. The next trick is I'm a big, big fan um, of baking and we'll do this today brand that I really really love because we did so much with this brand when I learned how to do makeup. It's Cryolan or Cryolan like we say in Germany. It's the dry powder and this is so white and I really really love this because when you want to exaggerate your look this is so perfect and what I really really love and really appreciate is when my highlight after the baking is really popping. And for this I'm a big fan of using the baking technique before you make the rest of your makeup. If you don't have much time on hands, it's better to do it after you are finished with your makeup look because you can get in real big trouble because normally on work days I will do it like this. I will do my makeup and when I'm ready and when I have time left on my hands, then I will start baking. But for this video, I'm just saying on this video, I'll show you how to do it while we are still doing our makeup. You see, I've chosen a perfect black turtleneck for our today's video because I really want to get messed up. Um, <laughs> So, and we're gonna start, I hope you can see it, it's really white, plain white, and I really like that because when you don't overdo it, it's perfect. So I go in, in the product and tap off the excess and you see 
there is a lot coming up. And so what you will do is you will highlight the places that you highlighted before. I just highlight really the highest points, not the whole cheekbone, just, just the edge of the cheekbone where my cheek flows into the rest of the cheek. So, and then I'll form a light curve over here because I have a very hollow face in nature natural habitat. So uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll go directly on the edge of my jawbone and then on my cupid's bow and that's no problem when you go on your lips but you have to remove it afterwards because it will get very dry if you leave it on there for too long. In the corners of my mouth and what I would like to do is I like to line up these shadows here because I don't know I don't like them. So and then I make a little triangle in the area where we went before. And please, I can just give you the step, don't go in the under eye area. You will mess it up with a white powder because it will make everything look a little bit grey when you are um, a little bit blue or greenish under there. It's very light, very poppin'. And what I always have to do, because I sweat a bit on the forehead, and with a bit I mean a lot. So I like to set in this whole area, but um, I have to be careful. I don't want to go brighter, I want to go higher up to compensate. And now you can imagine when you've already done your eyebrows, my eyebrows are naturally black. It would mess this up quite a bit when the excess would go in there. You see like this. The next tip that I have for you is to take some of those. Never really see them in English or American makeup tutorials. I don't know why this is perfect because you can press in the makeup into powder very, very, very firmly into your skin. And that's so important when you have powder and you want to set your face. You need one of those or a beauty blender. You go in, and just press it really into the skin. Now we have to wait a few minutes. I'll be back soon. And now we're gonna dust off the excess. I think you can already spot the difference. When you overdo it with the time that you let it sink your baking powder in, it can sometimes get a little bit too light. And I think the perfect time for baking powder to sink in is like mm, 10 to 15 minutes. You can drink a coffee or your tea, eat your breakfast. Don't have the problem then that your makeup will move over the day. So and now we come to the most fun part, to the contouring. So for the contouring, I'm gonna use the Shade and Light palette from Ken Van D because real talk right now. I really love this palette. It is so perfect. The tones. It's a little bit messy in here. So because of the tones, they are all cool. Warm tones, they have more red in them. And you can look a little bit like with a fake tan. Mostly when you are under artificial lighting that is very cold, it can look really horrible. And I love these shades, they are so perfect. You have a very, very good base shade here. Then you have a little bit more off a more intensive shade and then you can go really really dark and I appreciate it. So we have a highlight tone in here. This one I use for the area under my eyes like this one too because you see in the inner eye area I have a little bit of a green discoloration. So like here we have a little bit of green so a little bit of red will neutralize the color. And the, the yellow color I use for the little bit of purple discolorations over there. First of all, I'll go in in the basic shade. You can blend them so well. Dust off the excess and I'll just start to just go in a little. Very light handed, you can grab the brush at the end. More light handed and this is nothing big. This is not the finished contour. It's just to set our play around a little and to have a nice base 
for the counter that will come. So the same thing with the nose. This is not our finished contour. This is just a little bit like a little, yeah, you know, very feathery, very light will just make the base. So and because I think my nose could be a little bit shorter, I will go under here very light and just a little bit to reduce the size of the tip of my nose. And then I'll go into the temple area and I'll start to darken everything a little bit, to tone it a little bit down. together a little bit later but it's very important that you don't have any sharp edges or something like this just a very smooth first impression and what I try to do maybe you can already see it I try to stretch my forehead a little now I'll go a little bit darker on the temple area, just to blend everything in. So now you see this is our ground shape. Now we go in the middle shape. So what I will do is I'll start here in the corner on my hairline because I want to darken there and blend everything down from there to have a nice dream. And then I'll go in very light, 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 light handed in the beginning of the under cheekbone area. And the rest I'll use for the nose. So you see, our forehead, our forehead, there is enough space for us all. So my forehead looks still very patchy, you see, the transition is not in there. I try to have a shade range already implemented on my skull. I try to reform all the structures and then we will blend in everything together. You will see what I mean, because after this we will set another round of highlight and then everything will come together. <laughs> come to the interesting part we come to the darkest color I think I love this step because it creates such a difference and so I go in with another the ego brush and I'll go in the darkest shade and tap off the excess and I will go over my skin just a little that there isn't a possibility that I create harsh lines that won't go away <laughs> to the area right under the center of the eye so that there is an alignment and what I love to do when you can't show your nose that's very important start from the bottom and you have to start from your nostrils because it looks very strange when there is no color but your nose is contrary area here just to have a connection from the nose to the eyebrows. I'll go in with the Zoeva blush brush. I'll go into the darkest shade just a little riddle little bit and just go over this area again just a little and over this one. So and the next thing we have to do is blend everything together. For the blending I have two different brushes. They are no name brushes but I really really love them. Like under a dollar. What could possibly go wrong if you buy a bunch of brushes and one of them is good? Um, 
I mean, that's perfect. And they are so good. I really, really love them. They are from Action. They are so awesome. I really love them. And what I do, I begin on the forehead at the lightest patch. And I start to blend everything together. <laughs> So and what I do, I take the brush right at the beginning because I want a lot of control over the situation and I will blend in now everything in a little bit hard together. with your highlighted areas. You want to blend in everything together, like here you see it. And what I do, I know I have a little bit of darker color on there, but I will go over the light areas just a little bit so that I have every color and every other color. So and what you see now is that we have a lot of a finer transition between each shade. So the next thing is because we blended a lot of the colorway, you can see it in this area, you can see it over here, we blended a lot of color away. So I'll go in with another of these beautiful no name brushes and I'll go into the color just a little bit, dust off the excess. Go over these certain areas just a little bit and what you want to watch out for here is that you don't want to create another rim or edge that you have to blend in. You just want to make the color a little bit more popping. then you can go blend in with a bigger brush or you can do it real stylish I like to do that, I don't know why with a big powder brush, like a kabuki brush and you just go over here because it will make a very fine transition it doesn't take the color away as much as a firmer brush will do because this one is so soft, I really love it when you go over just a little bit you won't take much of the color away correct with powder so like I said we go in with the orange shade so and what is very important when you do color correcting uh, with powder you have to press in the powder before you dust it off so you press in the powder and then you can dust. The next tip that I have for you, if you want to do this, if you want a little bit of a more natural contour, you can go in with this beautiful little thing and press everything in a little bit, really deep into your makeup so that it will look a little bit more natural. Now we're gonna dust off on the excess powder under the eyes for the color correcting. 
now we are going to do the highlight. So I'll go in in the lightest shade in this one, just a little bit. And then I will again define my cheekbones. shadows a little bit on the jawline to cut the contour on the cube as well and under the eyebrows you can use a little bit of a tinier brush if you like to but I love this one really much because it doesn't pack on the powder it's more like you have just a tiny little breeze of highlight and I really appreciate that. Then I'll go into the inner eye area. But you really have to look out uh, when your eyes are a little bit wider apart and you highlight the inner eye corners. It could be that your eyes spread further away. But now for the inner eye area I'm going to use a real hairbrush. I'll go into the highlight again and highlight the inner eye corners. I'll dust off all the excess from the highlighting powder. I usually don't do a highlight on my nose because I just don't like it. So then I'll use a small Zoeva and I will prepare my eyes for the eye makeup. Today we will do a natural look. I'll go in again with the lightest color of the Shade and Light palette from Kat Van D. And I'll just start to shade my crease just a little bit. So that we have a first shadow here, you see the difference already. Just a little bit, you know, very, very, very light handed. And we're are not redefining anything. We're just setting the playground again. So then I'll take a little bit of a bushier brush. I'll go in into the lightest brown color. And now I'm gonna do define where I want to play. I'll go a little bit under the eyebrow because I have a little bit of a hooded lid. And we want to take everything out of that bad boy. Then I love to go over my eyelid. But with this palette we don't have much fallout, which would contaminate the under eye area, so this is very perfect. And you see it already. Um, I think there could be a little bit more. Now we'll go in again with the smaller Zoeva brush, go into the lightest, darkest shade again, and just to find the outer corner of our eye so that we'll have a better feeling for the space everything will be a little bit more rounded a little bit more open a little bit like cut crease style you will see what I mean soon so you know that we have a lighter shading you can see I prepared the other eye what I want to show you is the next trick we go in with the middle shade and go into the crease and form it out we won't blend it this as hard as the first shade. We'll just go in a little to have more focus on the crease. And what I'm going to do is I'll go against this little bit of skin here and reshape this. So now you see the movement of my eye or the dynamic of my eye is a little bit upwards and it doesn't seem as hooded as the other one. For me it's a really big problem to have an eye that is a little bit hooded. When I'm looking for men, I really love when they have those uh, really, really beautiful eyelids. Next step I'm gonna do is I'll go in with this color and shade the outer corner just a little bit more inwards. I'll go in with the darkest color and the smaller Zoeva brush just set a real focus. Now I'm going to 
going to use a real fur brush, go in with the darkest shade again, tab up, and now I want a really really strong focus in the outer corner of the eye and what will work really well is when you go in with your finger and blend it as and what can help when when you messed up a little and it's a little bit patchy, go in with your finger. Your fingers are the most intuitive tool that you have. Then I'll go in and set a focus on the inner corner of the eye because I think it sharpens the form of my eyes. The next thing we're gonna do is we will make the under eye area more focused on the face, you know. So for this I'm gonna use the Zoeva brush again, go in with the lighter shade, tap it off, and then from the outer corner of the eye I start to prepare our background. So what we're gonna do here is darken up the whole eye area so that we'll have more contrast against the white of our eye, a sharp in the view, a beautiful look, I really love to do that. Much darker shade, so we apply to the Bare Trends Miki palette, that's a no-name palette, but look the shades, I really like some of those shades, you can see she's used up real good, <laughs> and the other ones, they are okay, they are a little bit patchy, not so easy to blend, but for this area it's really perfect. So now I use a very very small brush, a very dense pack brush, I'll go in with the darkest brown shade here, just start to contour my eye from the outer corner to the inner corner. I call it the panda transformation because you start with like a very sharp defined line. What I love to do is I'll go in to the beginning of the inner quarter to the upper waterline and I find that part just a little bit because it opens the eye and then I go in with the um, whole brush from the Urban Decay Naked Palette and I just start to blend this bad boy. So what you do is you go in there very light handed so you don't destroy the underlying foundation. You just start to blend, it's already more smooth. And you blend and blend and blend till there is a very very smooth cloud of color particle. It's beautiful. And what you do is you go in over and over again with the dark shade and darken this area and you keep blending the direct center. So because it will take some time, I'm gonna do the other eye off camera and finish this side and I'll be back in a moment. So now we are back at it again. You see I finished the under eye area and I like to exaggerate because it focuses my view more. The next thing that we are going to do are the eyebrows and the lashes. But before we start we will do our highlight with the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. But I think it was a little bit overrated because is it a game changer? No, I don't think so. But do I like the palette? Absolutely. So we have three shades here and you see this one, I never used this one. We'll go in with this beautiful shade in the middle because this is so translucent, so light. We'll do the whole cheek area and I'll show you how. We'll just go in and do the whole cheekbone to the apple of the cheek. And so we're gonna do on the other side. I like to go in, in this area because it breaks the harsh line. Then now we'll go in. Oh, I love them so much. Becca Cosmetics. They make the best highlighters. I mean, I hope I can get my hands on the Jaclyn Hill highlighter soon. Because I'm so, so, so amazed by these after the whole lipstick gate stuff. And I hope she's back at it again. We'll see that so perfect, right? The perfect drama story first. You're on the ground, nobody's there, and then you're great coming. We'll go in with the shade Vanilla Quartz. In German it's called like Vanilla Quartz. Beautiful. So you see, she is used already. She's already used a bit in this ultra high reflective zone here. It gets so dirty so fast. I really love this. Some people like to go in with fan brushes, but I think this is, was more of a trend. What I like to do, I'll go in with the Zoeva brush. 
take a little bit of the highlighter and then I'll go in in a curved motion I don't know if you see much this is a natural look so then I love to go in with the fan brush afterwards real fur brush, take up a lot of pigment and I'll go in there Cupid spot and the upper lip area Fan brush again and go on the gel roll. Now we start with the eyebrows. I have very, very dark eyebrows. Normally I choose a little bit of an androsite tone, uh, but it's a little bit too ashy for it, the camera. So I'll go in with a little bit of a darker shade, dark creamy shade. So I'll go in there. I love to use angled brushes, liner brushes. I'll go in. Then I'll do my eyebrows. I have a little bit of an eyebrow brush. I brush the hairs in the direction where they belong. And I'll just start to fill them up. Hi guys. So we are back at it again. Um, I had a little issue with the battery of my camera. Where were we? Exactly the eyebrows. I still try to figure some stuff out, but now the eyebrows. Perfect. What I think is very important when you do your eyebrows, there are certain rules that can apply when you do them. Because you know, you have something like in Germany it's called beauty makeup angle where your eyebrows have to start where they reach the highest point and where they'll end if you want me to do a video on this comment section so we are back at the eyebrows again so i have a little bit of black color on the back of my hand and i start to fill in the little holes of my eyebrows i use a little angled brush and you know i have very 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 strong eyebrow hair really messy <laughs> I tried something like brow pomades gel and it doesn't fit me. When it's tinted like these from a Makeup Revolution London, they are not sticky enough. My eyebrow hair will get very, very, very clumpy and very disgusting. And so I just try sometimes to lay it down with a little bit of gel, with a little bit of hairspray, you know, some stuff like that. Or I leave it all bushy, but from the side it will look always a little bit messed up. So first I fill in all the holes just a little. And do you know what's interesting? My eyebrows, they look very, very bushy and very hairy, but they are not. My hair is quite long, but I have so big holes in my eyebrow, I really don't know why. Just amazing. You see this eyebrow, it's really, it's quite good. It's okay, we buy it. It's very important that the first part of your eyebrow is the lightest part. The next part, the second and the third part are evenly dark and here you have the darkest point of your eyebrows. The next step is I'll find the outer and inner line of the eyebrow. And then I'll hit the sweet spot. Yes, right there. Then we're gonna do the other eyebrow, but you see already that because my eyebrow hair is standing up a little, quite messy. So. And then what is very useful if you have such a sweet, sweet brow and lash comb you can go in there and smooth everything a little bit out. I had a friend, she had a trick with a Q-tip. She said she'll go in in the first part of the eyebrows, take a little bit product out. Ooh, great! Oh, I go against the grow direction so that the product is evenly distributed. And then I'll go with the brow direction. And what I sometimes really like is 
when the hair in the front is straight up because you know it looks a little bit fashier, a little bit more natural you know and I don't know sometimes I really like this sometimes I really don't and then I look on the pictures and I'm like oh why what did I thought about it that's enough um, the next thing we do are the lashes and I have a special trick because I'm that kind of person for natural looks I don't wear falsies because when I go out I want to look natural I don't like when I have false lashes and other people can see them I had a friend and he had lash extensions and they looked so horrible and we didn't <laughs> we didn't tell them in this messed up messed up friend today we're gonna use the bad girl bang mascara from benefit so guys and now we are already at the lip section <sniffs> sometimes people ask you what do you like about yourself about your body and I really like my lips today I'm gonna do my lip line with a double wear stay in place lip pencil from Estee Lauder and I really love those lip pencils they are everything and it's the shade 14 wine great brand and you know sometimes you have to spend a little bit of cash if you want something you buy cheap you buy double so what i really love to do i take a dense concealer brush first i just want to try to get a feeling for my lips you know the playground thing what i do is first i just colored in evenly a little bit everywhere and then i do the lines so but before i forget it always try to moisturize your lips and sometimes you can even prime your lips i like them very much some eyeshadow primers are suitable for that too i just was like i just wanted to try it and i was like oh my god because i use one eyeshadow primer as a lip primer because i wanted to have my lips in place the whole night and it was really beautiful so uh, today we make it basic we are basic this is an ear lip bar, just normal ear. Just a normal ear lip. I was always like, aren't there only spheres? But no, sticks are coming too. That's amazing. And I really like that because it's just more practical. So I start in the center of the lid, applying just a little bit. And sometimes that's a really good trick. You have to swipe left, right, left, right to add up more color because I'm not a fan of directly applying the lip pencils on my lips because here it's quite hot in this room and they're a little bit too creamy. Because it's a little bit too reddish for me or a little bit too reddish on screen I took a little bit of it off it's a little bit too greasy for the next step so in the next step there is this beautiful Shiseido lipstick I love 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 the Shiseido lipsticks it's the shade 515 melodrama this shade I really love it it's so beautiful I really really like it so and this is the finished look with the lipstick on so the next step I'm gonna do is I always set my face and this is the Urban Decay All Nighter. I have to say really I don't really know if it does anything. I, I have, you know I'm like in that headspace where I think come on just use it and the bottle is soon empty and I don't know if I'm gonna buy it again. But all the people, all my friends say oh my god it's so amazing. But you know you have to do you and nah I don't know I have to try out a setting spray. So, Let's miss it. Phew, that was refreshing. was so amazing and such a great journey and please let me know in the comment section I just spit it all over the place <laughs>
So just let me know if you like this video. If you have any tips for me, please tell me them because I still try to figure stuff out and it was really so amazing and it took such a long time to record this and it was so much fun and I hope you guys just stay with me and we'll see us in the next video. Bye, love you all.